Euh... On, va pas, on, part, la vie, on doit viser 17h30 pour la fin. So, okay. so we have to make it efficient. We need to finish the session by 5.30 because we have the shuttle to get down to the dinner reception tonight if you wish to take the shuttle. The dinner reception is 7 p.m. But this last shuttle is 6 p.m. here. So we will not... Yeah, we can, we can, we can. Yeah, sure. But if you wish to take the shuttle, the last one is 6 o'clock, and we we'll manage for you to be able to, to take it. So there will be the presentation of Jean-François Guégan from uh, the French Institute of uh, Research and Development about climate change and infectious disease. And then we will have a presentation of uh, posters. Those of you who want to share, uh, make a teaser of your poster, but two minutes teaser, huh? So that means to be a one minute teaser, okay. And then we move to the poster and we can discuss in the poster lobby. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon to everyone. Before starting with this presentation, let me introduce myself. So I'm a senior, senior professor at the French Institute for Research in Developing Countries. So it means that I passed, or I used to pass my time in tropical areas of the world, in Africa, Southeast Asia, and uh, Latin America as well. And I'm also a professor at the French uh, School of Public Health, where I teach uh, global change on health. So today, uh, so I, I've slightly changed my title with a subtitle, putting the car before the horse. The, 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 the French translation is, not, uh, is quite different from the English expression anyway, but uh, so I'm, I'm totally, I totally agree with, uh, with some comments uh, made before, notably by Carla, uh, is that uh, we uh, definitely need to develop, I mean, an evidence-based research on climate change and health. One, one of the reasons of the disappearance of this topic uh, in the United Nations uh, research program, notably the World Health Organization, is that so many stupid things have been said on climate change and health with any, any base, based evidence research that this topic has been uh, withdrawn from U U UN uh, uh, resolutions during the, 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 the past uh, decade. Today it is becoming again, but we do need to have more time series, more spatial series in order to develop, I mean, uh, uh, an evidence-based research. So we go. Uh, so, I mean, I like this cartoon, so I made the translation in English. So two guys, there are two mosquitoes, are uh, living uh, in the tube in the other ground in Paris. And one, the first one is saying in Paris for a long time, yes, since the last uh, AV summer heats, yes. And they will for sure transmit to you infectious disease like Zika virus or chikungunya virus. Is it, uh, is it definitely clear that they will transmit to you and give you tropical disease in temperate areas? And will, will we have uh, more tropical disease in temperate areas due to climate change? This is the question, okay? Uh, the main problem I'm facing today, it's not with researchers, this is with journalists. Because when they give me a phone call, Jean-Francois explained us what will be the tropical disease that will uh, appear in Paris uh, within the next uh, years due to climate change. I explained to them, we are not sure of that. And the journalists are telling me, are you sure of that? Because we read this in any newspaper today. But the the, the writings in newspapers are not supported, supported by scientific evidence most of the time. So this is the this is the, 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 the style of picture you could you could you, you could read and you could you, you could look at in, in different uh, uh, newspapers, media newspapers, scientific papers. 20 years ago, you know, with this uh, map, this distributional map of malaria disease all over the world, 
okay, and due to climate change. So we have, we have strongly changed our point of view today about this, uh, but you can see from this picture that this is a dramatic point of view about climate change on Earth. Let's remember that during, uh, by the mid of the uh, 20th century, not so far from today, in northern Italy, on medium Italy, on the south of France, there were a lot of, lot of cases of malaria disease, and not due to climate change. Okay? And even in London, at the end of the 19th century as well. So, there is a link between climate, climate variability, climate change, and infectious disease, but other drivers can happen to make that the disease is able to sustain or not in a given region. So, uh, we do already discuss about this book. Uh, this book has been produced for COP22, I guess. Yes, is it? So, I will let the specimen here, but you can download, I mean, the book. Uh, from the website of my institute here. So this is the, the URL, uh, the internet uh, site, and you can download for free a PDF file of it, okay? So uh, in, in this book, several people uh, uh, present here have written or participated to the writing of a chapter, but uh, with Isabella, uh, Robert Baruki, and I, we have been in charge to produce, I mean, a review uh, about uh, climate change and air in the Mediterranean basin. So there are not so few, I mean, research work working on infectious diseases in the Mediterranean basin, trying to link climate change to the development and spread of infectious disease. Uh, so I found several papers discussing, and most are review, made and produced on review of paper with very, very poor empirical data indeed. So you can have a look on these different uh, scientific production. Uh, anyway, so we already have seen this uh, nice picture, so I will concentrate on the impact of climate change on health and mainly on infectious disease because this is my field of expertise. Okay, uh, so is this nice guy, I mean the tiger mosquito present here in Italy today, just due to climate change, so the rest, the, I will totally directly go to the, to, the, to the answer. Nothing to see with climate change. Much more to see with trade, and the trade of Thai, secondary uh, uh, Thai uh, trade. And it appeared two decades, two decades ago in Albania. And then it came into Italia, and it is spreading all over, all over the south of France and even Spain. But I will show you how uh, car traffic and tr uh, 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 truck traffic and, uh, and even uh, train traffic has a strong importance in the spread of this mosquito, responsible for causing Zika virus uh, disease, for instance. So nothing to see with climate change, indeed. So we already discussed about the impact of climate change, direct impact and indirect impacts on health. So I will discuss but most of the time about, about the in indirect impacts on infectious disease. So in this book, you will find this table. So in two separate uh, uh, slides, the first one, you see the different diseases that are still present in the Mediterranean basis, yes or no, yes. Most of them are present in the, in, in the Mediterranean basin, and you can see from this column that for most of these uh, different infectious diseases, when you say no, is that we have very, very poor evidence demonstrating that climate change is responsible for their persistence within this region and even their spread, producing outbreaks and epidemics. You can see that most of the time, this is no, 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 except for some items, okay? You can go directly onto this table uh, in, in, in this book, okay? So the second, this is the same, so this is the following uh, sub-table, okay? And you can see no, 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 except for some ones. So we have very, very poor data for the Mediterranean Sea, so this is a series of cases uh, of dengue fever in the Mediterranean area with different cities and regions 
and you can see that the dengue fever was present for a while in the Mediterranean basin, and again, nothing to see with climate change. So, I mean, the ship trade within the region, the basin region, has, has got a strong importance in the spread of this infectious disease all over the, the, the region, the Mediterranean region. So anyway. Okay, so I will concentrate on climate change and mm, for my talk today about infectious disease because I'm, I'm, I am an infectious disease epidemiologist and secondly, I'm also a numerical ecologist at, my, at, at heart. So I have, I have two, two different jobs to, 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 to put together, okay? So uh, I used to produce modeling as well, so I, I've, I was quite comfortable with the two previous uh, talk, talks as well. So you can see from this slide that, I mean, um, this is for, I mean, diarrheal disease that are due to different uh, infection, infectious disease agents. It can be a bacterium, it can be a protozoan, it can be a, a, a bacterium, and it can be other reasons that an infection as well, that uh, epidemics of diarrheal infection here, I'm not sure that the, the pointer is working anymore. Oops. No. Okay. So anyway, uh, you can see uh, you can see like epidemics boom and burst of, of uh, disease cases of diarrheal infection. This is in Peru, but not in in, in, in Mediterranean area because we have that such uh, time series to show you today. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you can see this boom and burst that, that produce epidemics and that goes quietly well and that, that correlated very well with um, the temperature in the, in, the, in the sea because this bacteria and these viruses are located and are totally embedded into the aquatic marine environment and they produce this series of booms and bursts, so producing epidemics, so depending on the sea, uh, surface temperature, which uh, boost their own population dynamics. So here, I mean, uh, for this case, disease, uh, they are strongly sensitive to climate conditions. But here, I'm not discussing about climate change. I'm discussing about climate and climate variability during a year. So I'm discussing about the seasonality and the fluctuations of epidemics during a year. Okay, so I will take two examples. Uh, I, first, I will go with bacteria living in, a, in the marine system, and then I, I, I will show some illustration about the, 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 the tiger mosquitoes, which is responsible for uh, transmitting, I mean, some infections to humans. Okay, so we go uh, with bacteria living in the marine systems like Vibrio, which are responsible for causing diarrheal disease and even for the dreadful killer, which produce, I mean, cholera. Okay, so you can see uh, from uh, this uh, uh, slide that cholera here, yeah, this is cholera at Kolkata in, 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 in India and uh, Matlab in Bangladesh, that cholera, at least for this one, uh, is uh, depending on the season and it, it, it depends as you can see uh, here uh, from the sea surface temperature as already uh, uh, said to you, but it also depends on the chlorophyll A concentration and other parameters just because its habits, its ecological niche depends on these conditions. So sometimes during the year, some conditions are good for the reproduction and the spread of the bacterium here or the virus uh, to uh, duplicate and then to produce epidemics in, 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 into the population, okay? So, uh, we can have longer series, the same region in India and Bangladesh, so you can see uh, that uh, I think that uh, cholera cases are in black, they are totally correlated, highly correlated with some, I mean, drivers of, of this disease emergence and epidemics in, in, in the population, 
okay. But this kind of uh, data are very rare in epidemiology. This is what we call, I mean, time series, uh, time series. Uh, okay. So you can see that the population dynamics of infections in humans strongly depend on the conditions in the environment that are highly favorable or not for the reproduction, the spread, and the spillover from the environment to human population when they are exposed to. That's the same, so main idea, and we absolutely need to, de to develop and to get long time series of such data. So we need to develop surveillance uh, of uh, these uh, uh, infections, and notably in the Mediterranean Sea basin, because we have very, very poor data indeed about infections. And if we want to reply to the question, is climate change or will climate change will have an impact on these infections in the Mediterranean basin, we absolutely need to have this time series, uh, of course, and even spatial series as well. Okay? So if we go in deep in time now, and we want to correlate this time series of cases with uh, here, this is the Sun-Sun Oscillation Index in the, in the ocean, uh, uh, Indian Ocean, so I cannot explain you uh, why, but anyway, you can see that after, after the, 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 the 70s and 80s, you can see that the SOI Index and the cholera epidemics are strongly associated, but what we call in counterface. So, uh, you can see that when your SOI is high in value, uh, you are uh, with lower cases and the reverse conditions happens. When you have the lowest cases of SOI, you have the big epidemics. So I can explain you in deep, but something is happening with the SOI that uh, physicists are telling us that it is uh, uh, connected to uh, the Enzo uh, El Nino El Nino phenomenon that makes that during the El Nino El Nino phenomenon something is happening on the different epidemics for this disease, okay? But again, I'm not speaking here about climate change, I'm speaking about climate variability because the El Nino El Nino phenomenon is climate variability and not climate change. Physicists can explain furthermore if there is a link between El Nino, El Nino phenomenon and climate change, but I will not go in detail uh, with this today. Okay? So the El Nino, El Nino uh, phenomenon in, in, on the planet today is producing many epidemics, and the reason is why, depending on the rainfalls in a given region, more rainfalls, it gives it transforms the habitats, it gives more rainfall, say, for the mosquito to reproduce, and if you have more mosquitoes, you can have more infections on this is case in animals or in humans, okay? So you see now the link between the El Nino, El Nino phenomenon and epidemics. So the same for uh, here, this is the Baltic Sea. Uh, this is what we observe today, okay? But what is more important, and I, I am trying to make the link with the second part of my talk, uh, which concerns the, uh, the, the Aedes albopictus uh, tiger mosquito. This is about, I mean, uh, storms, uh, EV storms that can happen today, notably in the south of France. We call, we call this the seasonal events that happens during the autumnal period that produce heavy rainfalls in the regions of Marseille, Nîmes, and Montpellier, where I live. But with these uh, heavy rainfalls, that with the waters uh, flowing, uh, f flowing uh, uh, to the, to the, to the uh, lagoons, so more uh, fresh waters makes that you observe a decrease in the salinity into the lagoons near Montpellier, for instance. So having less salinity into, uh, into the lagoons makes that it's good for some bacteria, like this one, Cholerae, Vibrio cholerae, Vibrio vileficus, and Vibrio paramoemoleticus that can explode and increase in population size, and you can get them when uh, eating upon oysters or, or, or marine fruits, for instance. So with this uh, heavy rainfalls into this uh, region, okay, this makes that it has a strong impact onto the salinity, decreasing the salinity, so increasing 
the production of this bacteria into this system. So you are at higher risk to contract geriatric disease in these cases. Okay? So we pass now to the Aedes albopictus. Uh, so again, uh, for this, a type of uh, uh, mosquitoes that can transmit tropical infectious diseases like dengue fever, uh, Zika virus fever, chikungunya virus fever as well, the insect is, is necessary for uh, the transmission. You need to, to be bitten, bitten by a, a mosquito. If the mosquito is infected, you can contract the infection and develop a disease, okay? But uh, the mosquito is a condition that is necessary but not sufficient, okay? Other factors may or will help to explain the development of outbreaks and epidemics uh, with a vectorial bone transmission of this type, okay? So uh, this is the distribution of the tiger mosquito. This was the distribution of the tiger mosquito 10 decades uh, ago. But this shows you that the, the mosquito uh, were origina was originating from Southeast uh, Asia. And it came in, in Southern Europe, again, by the trade of secondary tire. Uh, because there are huge uh, trade of secondary tires all over the world, and it came into Albania first, and then entered into, Spain, into Italy, and then spread all over the southern Europe, France, and Spain, but just due to the trade of secondary tires. Then it found, it found the local conditions, of course, to develop or not. Okay, so this is the, the current distribution of the Aedes albopictus today, the tiger mosquito. Uh, sorry, uh, with, uh, so when it is red, this is the, the distribution that, is, that has been observed, okay? So again, the tiger mosquito is able to transmit many viral infections, uh, like dengue fever, for instance. But the presence of the, the, the mosquito doesn't say anything at all about, about, about uh, human cases, of course. Okay? So these are the projection of the Aedes aegypti, which is the tropical, the tropical vectors of dengue, for instance. So nothing, uh, no, no, or, or the, the, the map are near or uh, 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 green. But you can see that the Aedes albopic, uh, albopictus can find the, the, the climate, climatic suitability habitats for, for its spread totally independent from, from climate change. I mean, in many regions in the Po River Valley, for instance, or in the, the Loire River Valley in France, are very mild, soft, and even during the winter conditions for uh, having the mosquito, this mosquito, to, 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 uh, to sustain and spread and reproduce because the conditions are uh, totally adequate for it to, to be present and develop and spread. So most of the time, and this is what you can read in many scientific publications, according uh, to uh, transmission of infectious disease due to climate change, uh, uh, most of the time, this is the vector that is, that, that, that is present to you and that is modeled onto a map. This is not the infection. This is not infected case. And again, the mosquito is necessary for uh, uh, the transmission of the virus or any other infections of this category, but uh, you absolutely need to have the virus to be present, and in most of the, most of the time, the virus is not present because people here are totally confounding between the drivers that makes that the first cases of infections appear somewhere in a region, and what makes and what are the reasons for big epidemics like in Africa to happen, happen, and the drivers for having big epidemics to happen are totally different from those that are responsible for the settlement of the mosquito, which are due to climate. Other drivers for the development of uh, epidemics are just due to, I mean, poor conditions, sanitary conditions. Nutrition status is very important uh, as well. Nothing to see with climate change. So there is a strong confusion 
you are made between the settlement of the mosquito and the development of a big epidemics which are due to other drivers and other factors than climate. And we do know in epidemiology that many tropical diseases uh, settle in those countries just due to poor, con poor conditions, sanitary conditions that are very bad, etc., etc., etc. So uh, I, will, I will skip this. So, I mean, people, people are doing some projections like this one. We, we can have just a look uh, uh, on this. Uh, so this is the distribution in 2000. 15 of the Aedes albopictus mosquito with the red areas that shows you where the, the, the mosquito is present. And you can see the observation of climate here that are favorable during this, this period of time, favorable for the development of the mosquito. So what can you tell from this, comparing these two uh, pictures? This is the modeling, this is the observation. Quite the same year, so the period of time. There is an over uh, distribution of the presence of the mosquito here when compared to what we observe today. Because the climate, climate projection, projection are over uh, calculating the distribution of the mosquito. And again, nothing to see with dengue fever. I'm just telling you and speaking about you with, about the vectors, not the infections. Okay, so what we observe uh, today is that for uh, the, the tiger mosquitoes here, is that with the heavy rainfalls that we, re we receive in France due to the uh, seven, seven, seven-hour uh, uh, period and events, it produced heavy rainfalls in southern France that you can see in gray here. And so it produced an increase, no, the, the heavy rainfall is in the histogram bar here, this one. It, it makes that it produce gites or habitats for the mosquito to reproduce. So without the heavy rainfalls during the autumnal period, nothing happens and the population of the mosquito tends to disappear from the region. But with these heavy rainfalls, it gives a second chance to uh, the mosquito to reproduce, okay? And if you try to compare and superimpose with just superimpose, the, 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 here, the, the chikungunya fever virus is not present in southern France at the moment anyway. Uh, if, you, if you see this uh, green uh, line here, this is the period of time during which uh, the chikungunya uh, fever virus could be able to be transmitted to human. Okay, so it gives a second chance. This heavy rainfalls here, the seasonal period uh, uh, heavy rainfalls give a second chance to the mosquitoes to reproduce and so to increase the period during which the chikungunya virus could be transmitted if it existed, but it doesn't exist. So many people are doing the confusion. I des albopictus, the tiger mosquito, just putting it onto the map, saying that we are at risk to have tropical disease in, in, in Europe, in Western and Southern Europe. We have the mosquitoes, but we don't have the disease. And for the Zika, you can put the equation, as journalists used to do, with, you know, the microcephaly, Okay, so nice picture. Mosquito equals the disease, which equals the microcephaly syndromes. But this is very, very complex indeed to go from the mosquito presence and distribution to the development of the disease and to the microcephaly cases that have happened dramatically. Okay, so you will understand from this talk that you have. I mean, the development of an outbreak and epidemics and big epidemics of tropical infections in southern and western Europe has, of course, something to see with climate, of course, but other drivers are very important for this tropical infection to spread, and most of the time, the main drivers that are responsible for the development of these epidemics are, have, uh, have to see with what we call uh, uh, the bed of poverty, I mean. 
and nutrition as well. I mean, people are very sensitive to any infection if you are uh, malnourished, like in many countries of Africa, for instance. So you have just to increase the level of nutrition to get people being uh, better and better protected against infections. So uh, this uh, very recent work shows you that uh, this is the, the, the red arrow here. I will not go in deep into the statistics, so this is what we call, I mean, the GLM model. So this is, this is statistical model. They are using interactions, and these interactions so shows you that the Aedes albopictus is spreading not, not like a recurrent waves uh, northwards and westwards, it just uh, settle pockets of individuals that are totally unable to survive into these pockets. This is what the interactions can explain you to you today. And so it means, and the simple explanation is that uh, the mosquitoes enter into the back of your car and during the commute, commutation, it can set, settle here at Lyon or in Paris when you open the back of your car, uh, getting out from the car and spreading around, but just around with no infection. This is what the statistical modeling is telling you. So some people in my lab at Montpellier in collaboration with uh, a, a team uh, in, in uh, in Spain, of trying to, to understand what could be the role in Spain of cars and traffic, uh, car traffic into the spread and the dispersion of, the, of these mosquitoes. Okay, this is Spain, Valencia, etc. So you can see uh, these guys into into uh, into the into the cars here, collected into the cars, and this gives you according to different regions of. Uh, uh, Spain, the, the, I mean, the, mo the tiger mosquito traffic uh, that exists today in Spain just due to uh, car traffic. Okay. Okay, so this gives you uh, an idea, a list. Uh, for sure, you, you are not able to, to, to read this list, but you, can, you will be able to come back to this uh, presentation later. And this is the the, 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 the few evidence that we have about infectious disease, that climate change uh, is responsible for the settlement and, and, and spread. So I'm speaking about infectious disease here. So you can see that the list is not very huge. So totally different with what you can read or opening a newspaper or opening your Italian uh, TV tonight and saying so. Uh, Tiger mosquito uh, is all over uh, Italy due to climate change. No, no. So I will skip this. Uh, I will skip this uh, uh, also. I'm sorry about that. But I try to respect the time. Uh, I have to present this talk. So I want just, so this, this is in French. In, uh, so uh, there is an English, an, an, an English, uh, cartoon of this, but it was not of good quality. This comes from the newspaper Le Monde uh, Diplomatique, okay? And it gives you a good idea. This is the reason why I decided to present this uh, uh, picture, nice picture. I have two or three uh, more uh, slides to show you. It gives you, uh, I mean, an idea about the vulnerability of, the, of society. So risk, infectious disease risk, but I mean, environmental risk, risk, uh, environmental risk, health risk is the same. The risk is a calculation, a product between uh, hazard or multiple hazard, the exposition of individuals and uh, communities, like workers, for instance, multiplied as well by what we call vulnerabilities. It can be individual, it can be community vulnerabilities. So you understand that people living in tropical uh, Africa because they are Sometimes, for some of them malnourished, they are much more vulnerable to any infection attack, infectious disease attack, of course, because of this vulnerability. So this gives you a map and a, a diagram uh, in, with different colors, which give use for the different states, uh, the vulnerability of the states, okay, according to their uh, political decisions at the moment, the political government that they have, the uh, 
average nutrition status, etc., etc., number of hospitals, etc., etc. Okay? And here it gives you a good idea about the preparedness of these different nations. Okay? And you can produce this, this map, which show you, shows you that Africa is still staying Africa. And that most of African countries are not well prepared, not only to any infections, but to any disasters, okay? And uh, with very low, uh, very high vulnerability. Sorry, those, this is in orange and red, okay? So, a uh, best solution in order to decrease the vulnerability of those systems is first to prepare them to this risk, like climate change risks and disasters in order to decrease their vulnerability to this system. And this passed through, of course, education, increasing the level of universities in Africa, etc., etc. Okay, uh, and what is very interesting also, this is the, the, I mean, the, the increase or the decrease of the human population size in the world during, uh, during the, 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 the last decade, and you can see that population is increasing in population size. And this is good for French because French language will become the second language spoken in the world. I hope so for the Italian people as well. But anyway, this is the story. Uh, okay, so with people and African people increasing in population size, this is also good for infectious disease to settle because one of the main key parameter in infectious disease epidemiology, this is population size. Population size means, means more susceptible to any infections, okay? So with an increase in population size, for sure we'll get more epidemics of this style, in, notably in Africa, okay? Uh, to conclude, I mean, uh, this is in another book produced by my institute. I think that the way a climat climatologist and physicist working on climate change have seen uh, climate change has been in some ways responsible for this strange story for the topic. I mean, it was uh, on the arena 20 years ago, then it totally disappeared, and now it is becoming as a top priority in research, climate change analysis. And my explanation to that is that because climatologists have seen climate change to its impacts, one of them being uh, as consequences, as impacts in an upstream, downstream uh, fashion or way of thinking. Uh, ten days, ten years ago, they totally changed their way. Okay, I will be, I will be uh, on time. On time. Uh, second period, I mean, you, you can see that climate change is the main driver responsible for causing impacts on human individuals and societies on the even ecosystems. But it exists, I mean, feedbacks, loops, and, I mean, political decisions taken by the nations can strongly influence climate change, okay? So it becomes much more complex, but in these third scenarios, this is the one we are today, can, can you show me where is uh, putting exactly climate change? Climate change is not here, the upstream part of the, of the cartoon. It is somewhere inside the cartoon. This is here, okay? And uh, this uh, draw a much more complex uh, view about the role of climate change with other global change that happened, okay? Trade, uh, transportation of humans, of beings, of animals, is very important in the transmission and the spread of infectious disease, of course. So all is mixed together, climate change being one of the drivers, but not the only one than previously seen. Okay? So three steps, okay? So we are here. This period has produced, this is, I mean, the 80s to the middle of the 90s, produced many things, People in Europe will die from malaria, will die from dengue fever, will die from, uh, and it's not true, okay? And we are here because other drivers may mix together with climate change, like for infectious disease, producing or not outbreaks and epidemics. Okay, so I thank you um, 
for your attention and I'm ready to reply to some questions. Thank you very much. So I will let a specimen, but you can download a PDF file for free from my institute. So this is, this is uh, first, uh, the, the editors is my institute, but this is a scientific production from many different institutes in France with some collaborators, collaborators overseas as well. So this is a multidisciplinary, inter-institutional production. François, Isabella, and you. C'est bon, j'ai respecté. Thank you, Jean-François. Okay. Coming back to your C situation there, do you have any model that can predict what's going to happen if the mosquito is expanding its uh, area, its distribution area? Are we able to model whether or not there are risks for epidemia depending so, on populations on level of life and so on okay so again this is this is this is very complex to, to do so you understand that what is done 90 to 95 of the scientific production about vectorial disease is just met on the vector but the vector is, a, is the coach the coach can have some viruses or not but if you just model the distribution of the coach or of the coaches or the buses you will model only the distribution of the buses, or, or so of the, the insects, are not the virus that they can transmit. So you need to consider many other parameters. And we are not sure today that with an increase, say, of the temperature, the increase of the temperature will be good for the virus to duplicate into the mosquito. And then, when being transmitted to a human individual, uh, uh, it will, it, will be, it will be obliged to adapt to other conditions, etc., 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 making that the duplication of the virus, its infectious properties to invade the human systems are not well understood under that condition, etc., etc. So you are multiplying probabilities, multiplied by probabilities, multiplied by probabilities, and the final product is near zero. Thank you. May I, may I just have, I have a, so I produced in French, I'm sorry, Isabella, but uh, I produced a French paper for the Ministry of Health that asked me, uh, are the conditions today at Bamako, Mali, that I know very well because I lived in Mali at Bamako during the 80s when I made my PhD thesis there, uh, are the conditions, say, in 50 years, according to climate change, good for the development of the malaria disease? I can tell you no. With the conditions that are estimated for climate change temperature or rainfall values in Mali at Bamako, for instance, in 50 years, the cycle of malaria disease will not be able to, to work because the malaria protozoans will suffer a lot from these new conditions. Maybe not the insect, but the parasites will suffer a lot. So making that with climate change, so what I am explaining to you is totally the converse situation of what you have, you, you have read in different uh, papers and, and books. The conditions will be totally different from the parasites to generate uh, its life cycle, okay? And then to produce human uh, uh, infections in humans because the conditions will be so hard for the reproduction of the parasites. This is, this is, a, paras this is a parasite, so this is a protozoan. This is not a bacteria, so, so this, is, this, is, this is different. But, but this is strange that I am explaining you. Sometimes uh, with climate change, I mean, malaria disease, will disappear not from all the continent, but in some areas the condition will be so hard, okay, no water, high temperature, of course, hot water, uh, uh, hot, hot, hot conditions of temperature, but this will not be good for the disease life cycle as well. So less malaria cases. Uh, Isabella, I'm sorry. Uh, no problem, thank you, it's a very nice, 
to listen to this. A very nice talk too. I want to, would like to have a, your point of view on uh, what uh, Semenza is doing, uh, you know, trying to define a vulnerability index. Uh, he published some paper on that. Uh, and in the case of infectious diseases, showing that people living in Sweden, et cetera, by 2035 or 2055 will be at risk of infectious disease because of climate change, but also because of behavior mainly, I think, that has to, you had a very complicated scheme there. Obviously, uh, if we think about uh, uh, resilience or et cetera, some population could be at a higher risk than others. And uh, in their projection for it, it will be better than now, <laughs> but so, except uh, uh, Sicily. Okay. So uh, vulnerability or vulnerability is something very difficult to calculate. So it depends on the parameter that you introduce to calculate vulnerabilities. Uh, so it depends on the category of disease. You are, you are speaking about behavior. So I mean, for sexual transmission, behavior is, of course, important. But it can be important for a vectorial uh, bone disease as well. I mean, so 10, ten years ago at Dakar, so what we observe in Senegal and in many, many cities of tropical, tropical Africa today is that we have more and more uh, malaria cases in suburban urban areas. Is it, is it okay with you, suburban areas? I, I mean, uh, areas uh, around the city center where people are developing agriculture and agronomy, which, which, is, which is a big problem uh, in terms of infectious diseases as well. So we observe malaria, more and more malaria cases all over uh, Africa today, like in, in Dakar, for instance. And why? The reason with the development of agriculture, you need water to, to, to give water to the vegetable, okay? So you need to produce, to uh, generate channels, so new habitats for the vectors to reproduce and spread the infection, okay? So 10 years ago, uh, there, there were at least 150,000 cases of malaria in the sub-areas. Peri, peri uh, areas of Dakar. Today, there are only 1,500. And the big difference is the deliverance of bed nets, okay, that people can use. Uh, so if you decide, that the United Nations decide to, uh, uh, to sell the bed nets just for a symbolic one euro, people are using much more the bed nets if you give them for free uh, to those population, they do prefer to use them uh, to fish, uh, to protect the vegetable against the pest. And this has a dramatic effect because the bed nets have uh, some insecticides and repellents on, 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 on to the, on, on, on to the, the net, and it can percolate onto the vegetable the carrots that you want to, and then you have much more uh, uh, toxins into the vegetable that these people, just because they use bed nets, okay? So vulnerabilities is something very, very uh, uh, difficult to, uh, to estimate. So it depends if it's a chronic disease. So I cannot answer. It depends if it's an infectious disease. But most of the time for tropical infectious disease, I mean, uh, and this is, the big difference I see between medicine and public health and international public health, if you want to decrease the vulnerabilities of those population, you need to increase their level of education and you need to increase their uh, status, uh, the nutrition status. This is what I, I would say for infectious disease. In any case, you are uh, a good guy if you are a policy makers in doing so. I don't, but, you can, but vulnerability is something very different, very, very, very uh, complex indeed, like, like exposure as well, but, uh, yeah. Yeah? Uh, uh, your presentation has been very nice. So I am from India and especially from Kolkata. Pro so Kol Kolkata, Kolkata, yes. So, so I could not register myself to have some yeah. uh, doubt clear. Okay. Uh, 
Recently, we do not have cholera, cholera sir. We have uh, malaria or dengue or chikungunya maybe in, in news in Kolkata. Of course, uh, cholera was there before 1970s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of deaths uh, due to cholera. But in recent past, we do not have any epidemics on cholera. Secondly, uh, what, what, is your, what is your explanation for, for the absence of cholera, cholera break at the moment? We have now better sanitation, good water quality supply, and uh, I mean, cholera is something related to uh, water, drinking water. So that drinking water supply is very good nowadays. And uh, regarding malaria, I would say, so if I read the literature, uh, malaria was correlated with railway development. So railway development in India and Bengal was synonymous to malaria or any kind of fever. So malaria was known as uh, Bengal fever, Bordhuman fever, Kalajar, many types of fever was there. And now it is a dengue or chikungunya or Japanese encephalitis like that. So now problem is uh, it is sometimes correlated with mining activities and other thing. Recently I came another paper published from Tokyo University they have correlated that malaria with the labor concentration. Means the labor, most of the laborers, hardworking laborers are tribals. Mm -hmm. Tribals lives in uh, t rough terrain area, forest regions. So they carry malaria in their blood. So a mosquito bites a labor and bites other people. Uh -huh. That second people got infected. So now my, I want to know how climate change or railway development or mining or forest deforestation yeah, yeah. How this is, I mean, how can we correlate all these things? So, so this is, is my, my second topic, I mean, biodiversity deforestation and emerging infections. So. <clears throat> but we can pursue the discussion later uh, together. Yeah. Okay. Yes, my, thank you for the presentation. My question was really related to the last comment, I mean, to the last que uh, question. The point is, uh, uh, relating to the fake news we, we no, heard yeah. this morning, uh, here in Italy, mainly, there was this huge debate about the risks that uh, due to people, immigration, can pose to health for, uh, for example, the spread of uh, diseases that are not endemic for Italy or for Europe. So in relation to the first, com to the first question, uh, what do you think? You, uh, you have thought about this uh, double uh, possibility, the, the spread of the vector, but the spread of the, of the infec infection uh, uh, parasites, not the infection, the parasite itself, but people that move and yeah, bring yeah. the... Um, th so this is an interesting question, but we are sometimes at the limit of what we call the ontology and ethics, speaking about that. I mean, there, there are some, some national and, uh, and uh, European program on this at the moment because uh, we have more infections, for instance, coming from the south in Turkey and in Greece notably. There are lots of quarks in, in Greece at the moment uh, on, on this. Uh, but uh, it, most of the time, I mean, you see, uh, you, you have people migrating. I mean, how many people are infected? So you decrease the number of people on the total number of people that are infected. Again, this is always the same problem. Uh, and you multiply, so making that the risk, there is a nice paper that has been published in The Lancet very recently. Uh, one month ago, I, 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 a se I organized a seminar on this at the Ministry of Health in France. So in general, I mean, there, there, there are many things that are said that are not verified, verified by I mean, uh, evid I, I would say evidence. So my main message, again, but you can, we can discuss further. Uh, my main message is that, in general, in epidemiology, so I used to be in Africa, in Africa, for instance, this is always the others, the foreign years that are responsible for introducing the disease. Okay? On the other side of the river, for instance. Uh, so, I mean, in epidemiology, there are lots of traditional, I would say, fake news, for instance. If there were, uh, I mean, the disaster li li like a uh, typhoon or a tsunami, for sure, European community would put 
I mean, billions of euros uh, onto, onto those programs, and notably to studying else. But there is a nice meta-analysis that has been done by a friend of mine uh, on the 479 last different telluric, telluric uh, disasters in the past, and only in two cases it generated epidemics. Only two on this total amount. And the two situations of epidemics have nothing to see with the disaster. Okay? So in epidemiology, to, to, to end this talk, you, you see that sometimes to find the factors, the determinants of the drivers, it's sometimes very difficult to disentangle between the different uh, factors that are responsible for causing the disease and the outbreak. So thank you very much. I think that we have to end here and we uh, may continue during the dinner. Uh, we said that we will organize a presentation, a teasing presentation, one minute teasing presentation of the poster. So we have maybe quarter of an hour, 20 minutes to do so. If you can, uh, if you're interested in that, uh, um, in that proposal, please come, uh, come over me. I hand you the, the microphone and you can tease us. Who wants to do this first? Yeah, I think you want. <laughs> you look like you want. <laughs> And then we go to the discussion. Yeah.